Hi, I'm Dr. Felice Gersh, your integrative OBGYN physician, speaking to you from Irvine, California. Today, I would like to discuss a very important topic concerning hormone therapy for menopausal women. It's the use of hormone pellets. Now, first of all, those of you who have heard me before or know me know that I love hormones. I understand what they are. I know that they are critically important for every person and certainly every woman who I deal mostly with to have optimal health. You get information to the cells of your body by having the proper levels and timing of hormones in your body. With the advent of menopause and the senescence, the aging of the ovaries, what happens is you no longer have production of estradiol, the dominant estrogen produced by ovaries, along with progesterone. As well, with aging, somewhat independent of menopause, testosterone levels decline in women. In fact, by age 40, the average woman has only half the levels of testosterone she had when she was 20. So even if the level looks like it's within the reference range, it's going to be a lot, a lot less than what she had when she was at 20. Now, what can we do to deal with this hormone deficiency that is going to happen to every single woman approximately around the age of 50, but some women have very early menopause onset. It could be at age 40, and some women have very late onset. The latest I have seen is about 57, 58, but the average age, as I said, is 50 to 51. So what can we do? Well, we can do the obvious. We can give hormones that are identical. I call them human identical hormones. They're exactly the same chemical composition as what the ovaries were making and try to give them to be at a level that's physiologic. So we're talking about levels that would be the average approximately of what a woman would have during her menstrual cycle. For progesterone, we would want to give it in a pulsed way. So a woman who has a normal menstrual cycle doesn't make progesterone the whole month. What she does is she makes progesterone for two weeks out of each cycle, the two weeks following ovulation and then preceding and ending with the onset of the menstrual bleeding. So this is what our goal is during the menopausal transition and years to follow to maintain physiologic levels and somewhat a physiologic rhythm to the hormones of the female body. Now, what about pellets? The exact opposite of our goal is going to happen when you stick pellets into a woman. You cannot modulate the dose. You cannot change it. You can't control it. So this is what has become quite popular, and I speak against it. In fact, vehemently against use of pellets pellets in women. Now, it's a little different for men. It's not my favorite, but we're going to talk about men maybe a different day. But this is all about women and hormone pellets. So what they have are estrogen pellets and testosterone pellets. So they can be formulated by pharmaceutical companies that are designed and structured to make these pellets. And also they can be hand compounded by compounding pharmacies using the ingredients testosterone and estradiol, and then creating them into little pellets about the size of a little Tic Tac, okay? Now, then these pellets are loaded into a, like a little sheath and with a sharp end, and then they're placed in the subcutaneous tissue, usually in the hip area or lower abdomen area, into an area that has some fatty tissue. And that's what they do for pellets. And then they're reinserted a new batch every three to five, even six months. But here's the problem. The body doesn't take what it needs. And I mention that because I hear that ridiculous talk from so many people who go to pellet clinics. And that's what they're springing up around where I live and in Southern California, like pellet clinics where there are doctors and nurse practitioners and PAs who just 
poke people with these pellets and inject them with these pellets. And they're big money-making enterprises and they're not really appropriate. They're not even close to being appropriate because the goal isn't to create a new norm, a new way of having hormones in the human body. The goal is to realize that we are genetically programmed to have hormones in a certain way, in a certain rhythm, at certain levels. And pellets don't provide that. So when you stick in a pellet, what happens initially is you get an enormous amount absorbed. So you get supra-physiologic levels, enormously high levels. And I'll talk about that more in a moment. And then these pellets start to be absorbed at different rates and the levels start to decline in terms of what is related to the absorption. So you initially get this gigantic spike of hormones, estrogen and testosterone, if they put in the testosterone. There are no progesterone pellets, just so you know. So the, the, you get this giant spike and then it starts to go down, but the curve down is not predictable, nor is it straight. So you don't know what the, the, the decline is going to be. So different women will have different levels at different stages after the pellet is inserted. Plus different women have different subcutaneous levels in terms of how much fat they have. The pellet may be injected at different places within the tissue so that even in the same woman, she may not have the same absorption profile from pellet insertion to next pellet insertion. So here's what I'm finding. After the pellets are inserted over the first month, the levels are sky high. I mean, and I'm not the only one finding this. This has been replicated in published studies. So the levels will go up so ridiculously high it's actually dangerous and the side effects are horrific. But that said, some women will initially actually feel wonderful. It's like, how can that be, Dr. Kirsch? This is crazy, these levels. It's a steroid high. So uh, you probably heard this with men. Sometimes they take either um, chemical synthetic type steroids that are synthetic versions of androgens like testosterone, but they're not testosterone, or even taking actual testosterone. Then they take really ridiculously high amounts because they're trying to do bodybuilding. They want to get gigantic muscles, and they know that having these really super physiologic levels of androgens will help promote even like supersized muscles. And you've probably seen them on the cover of different kinds of bodybuilding magazines. And you say, how does somebody get that kind of muscle? Well, even no even exercising and doing tremendous weightlifting is not going to get you that kind of muscle that you sometimes see. That's a sign of exogenous steroid intake. Well, that can also create an emotional high. Even people who take cortisone, when they first take it in high amounts, they feel really great and high. That's what we call a steroid high. But you will have a, stero a steroid crash, guaranteed. It's not going to stay, and it's also going to harm you. In fact, some people go over the top, and they become highly agitated, angry. And this has happened in men where they can actually be violent. So the last thing we want is a steroid high. We want to be really high on life, but that's not the way to get there. Take a lovely walk, hang out with people you love. That's a better way to get a natural high. So what kind of levels are we seeing? Well, a typical level of estradiol that we're looking for when we put in, uh, when we put on creams or gels or a patch of estradiol, and which could be gels are on the arm, we could patches on the abdomen, gels can be on the leg, and if we use compounded creams, it could be in a variety of locations, more on that another day. But what levels are we looking to achieve? About a level of 100, at over 50, and usually under around 150 or so. But we definitely want to stay, for everyday use, we want to stay under 200, usually between like 70, 80, and 120. But, you know, there's a range that's acceptable from 50 to 150, even as high as the upper 100s, depending on how someone's feeling. But we don't really want to continuously have levels that are in the 200s and 300s and higher. Those are levels that are typically achieved for a very short period of the menstrual cycle around the time of ovulation and for a short period of time during the luteal phase. Sometimes the estradiol level will get over 200, but we don't want to do that all the time. Optimal is probably going to be 
replacing the menstrual cycle with hormones that truly mimic the menstrual cycle. And we're trying to do studies on that. But right now, we really don't have the data. But that's probably the ultimate best way to give hormones to women is to mimic a menstrual cycle because we'll talk more about that another day because there are many things that are dynamically happening in the body regarding gene activation, hormone receptor changes, and so on when you have these beautiful rhythms. But we want to be careful not to be super physiologic. We also don't want to be ridiculously low, so we're sub-therapeutic. So what do I see? Well, levels of like 800 a thousand. Remember, I said we want to get a level that's around a hundred. This is ridiculously high. Now, for a testosterone, I've seen levels six, seven, eight hundred. Those are very nice levels. If you're a male, adult male, not a female, unless you're trying to do a transgender. So these are terrible numbers for a human female. So I just saw a patient. She said I could tell about her story. I'm going to not tell you her name, but recently I had a woman patient who went and got pellets and she felt horrible. The only thing that saved her from having terrible random bleeding was that she previously had had a hysterectomy, but that is always going to be a problem with pellets, whether sooner or later, women are going to have all kinds of random crazy bleeding. And you know what I hear they're told by the pellet inserters, those pellet clinics? Oh, that's okay. Just go have a hysterectomy. Um, I don't think that is the right approach. The problem when you have all kinds of irregular bleeding, it's kind of a sign that maybe your hormones are really wacky. The last thing you want is lots of irregular bleeding, even if you know it's not uterine cancer. It's a sign. Your hormones are clearly not balanced. The solution isn't take out the organ that is giving you the signal. That It's like you have a warning light in the airplane. It's saying, low something, low pressure, low this. or So I don't really want to deal with that. I'll just turn off the light. Uh, I don't think that's the right approach. So let's not just remove organs because they're malfunctioning, because you're doing something wrong to cause them to malfunction. Okay, let's never do that. Now, what about my patient? She didn't have any levels tested the first month after she had the pellets inserted. It took another whole month. So two months out, what were her levels? Well, her estrogen level was nearly 400. That is a level that would last for maybe one day just prior to ovulation. That is not a sustained level of estrogen in any healthy, normal, reproductive age woman. That is inappropriate. And remember, that's two months out after she had the pellet inserted. So I can tell you, had I checked the level after one month, right in the beginning, even two, three weeks later, the level would probably have been easily double that. So at least 800, not a healthy, appropriate level. Now, what about the testosterone? Well, when we checked that one, that level was also 400, just about 400. Now, that would be a reasonable level, maybe a little suboptimal for a man. What's a typical level for a woman? About 30? That would be a nice level, 20s, 30. Typically, you don't want to get above 50. Some women actually feel good when it's a little higher, but you certainly want to keep the level under 100, 400. That's getting into the male zone. And this is two months out. So a month after insertion, it was probably at least six to 800. That's what we, that's a goal for men. So, oh my goodness, no wonder she felt awful. She had breast tenderness. She couldn't sleep. Her moods were crazy and she was breaking out with some acne. Oh my goodness. We definitely do not want pellets. Now, of course, we're waiting for it to wear off and we never know how long it's going to take. There are some women where the pellets wear off very quickly. I had one patient, another patient, not too long ago, and her levels were also crazy high the first two months. But by the third month, her estradiol, which had been around also around 400, had dropped to 40, which is too low. So it was probably like 800, then 400, and suddenly by the third month, it was down to 40. You can imagine what a roller coaster that would feel like. These are terrible hormone levels. This is not our goal. Please, I beg of you, do not fall for the hype. Pellets are not physiologic. 
They're not controllable. You can't change the dose. The body doesn't take what it needs. That's the crazy line that a lot of these pellet clinics put out. Well, we put in the pellet and the body just takes what it needs from the pellet. Uh, no, the body takes what it's given. That's how come if you overdose on Tylenol, you know, acetaminophen, which is one of the leading causes of acute liver failure due to accidental, usually accidental overdose of acetaminophen, the body doesn't take what it needs. That's why people overdose on heroin. People overdose on anything because the body gets what it's given. It doesn't take what it needs. So, I mean, that would be lovely. It just doesn't work that way. So don't even think that that makes any sense because it makes no sense. So pellets, not physiologic, give you crazy unpredictable levels of hormones in the body. Another crazy thing that's been said is that you put in these crazy high doses of testosterone from the testosterone pellets. And then what they say is, well, you don't need any estrogen, just put in a lot of testosterone pellets into women in the menopause. And then what the body will do is convert the testosterone into estradiol in the end organs, like the brain, the bone, the breasts, the gut, you know, wherever the blood vessels, that all the organs will convert the testosterone into estradiol as they need it. Well, that isn't how it works either. Sorry, guys. It, if it doesn't, well, it doesn't work that way. That's why you can actually turn female, you know, physiques. You can turn a female physique into a male physique with a lot of testosterone. It doesn't just stay in the body as estrogen in the end organs. It doesn't work that way. So if you give a ton of testosterone, you don't know how much of it is going to be converted into estradiol in the different organs. That's It doesn't work that way. You can't control it. So the bottom line is, I love hormones. I don't love menopause. I accept it. It's inevitable. And I want in the vast majority of women for them to understand and not be afraid of taking hormones, human identical hormones, but to take it in a way that you can control, that we can test, that we can modulate so that we're actually getting in physiologic levels so that you can be healthy and happy and optimize your health. So pellets, no, no pellets, please. And that's what I wanted you to know about for today. So until next time, Stay well and happy and go get a beautiful, happy high, but get it in the right way. See you soon. Take care.